Our next guest says ever since the Fukushima reactors in Japan began malfunctioning, even experts have been ignoring the worst case scenario. Larry Kotlikoff is a professor of economics at Boston University. He is also a Bloomberg columnist. His latest piece, Nuclear Power Runs Amok, is out today on the Bloomberg Terminal. Larry joining us now from Boston. Larry, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Why are Hi. there no experts talking about the worst case scenario? Well, I think they, uh, they want to stay experts. And if they start to sound like they're panicking, they may not be uh, viewed as expert anymore. Part of being an expert is keeping your cool. And uh, also, they may not really know. Uh, and they don't want to say exactly what the worst case did, what, what, the, what the worst case is. It could be actually worse than the worst case. Well, there's a, they, there's a lot say. of uh, unmeasurables, I suppose. So to your point, maybe they feel like they're going to lose credibility. Are you talking about politicians? Are you talking about industry leaders? Are you talking about uh, engineers or all three? I'm talking about all three scientists, the whole, the whole group. Uh, has a bias towards, uh, you know, if, if this is something, if this industry is something they're part of, then they're probably making money from it. So they've got a bias to want to keep it going. Uh, you know, we have a union of uh, concerned scientists, but we also have, in effect, a, a union of unconcerned scientists who, uh, who think this is uh, safe enough to continue with. Now, you say the don't. earthquake from just a week and a half ago, Larry, is just the beginning, that there are more disasters to come. I mean, how do you know this? You don't have a crystal ball, right? No, I don't, I don't have one, but I think we have to, uh, for the sake of our kids and grandkids, and et cetera, we have to err on the, on the downside. We have to think about the worst case. We've, we've seen four of the nine largest earthquakes since 1900 occur in the last seven years. So that's uh, an indication that maybe the distribution of these earthquakes, the probability of having really big earthquakes, has changed. And uh, Japan has got, already has 55 reactors sitting in a very you know, turbulent country in terms of volcanoes, and they're planning on building another 11. And many of these uh, reactors are quite old. And we read today in the New York Times that the uh, regulators have, in effect, been bribed not to do their job and uh, are rubber stamping the continuation of, uh, of reactors that, are, that should be shut down. And, okay. and the uh, view of this column, which I wrote with uh, Gene Stanley, he's a member of the National uh, Academy of Sciences, uh, is that we should shut them all down, not just in Japan, but throughout the world. Uh, well, you mentioned Japan. We've also seen some pretty severe earthquakes in South America. But you say these are not just cautionary tales from other countries, that the U.S. has just as much a right to be concerned, right? Yeah, Chernobyl was a, an example of human error. It wasn't an earthquake, it wasn't a tsunami, it was human error. Now, if you read today in the New York Times, they're talking about all kinds of human error at the Japanese plant. So it wasn't just Russians who uh, might have been drinking. Uh, there's some sus suspicion of that that caused Chernobyl, but also uh, Japanese uh, regulators who hope to get jobs in the, reg in the nuclear industry after they uh, leave their work who are looking the other way. So we have those same issues here in the U.S. We also have, we have a plant, uh, Dab uh, Dablo Canyon, out in California, it's 161 miles from Los Angeles, and that's right on the ocean. It could be hit by a tsunami, as reported in the Wall Street Journal a couple days ago, and it's on a, uh, a number of earthquake faults are very close to them. They found a new one two years ago, that it's, uh, it's about a mile away from a, an earthquake fault they just discovered. Okay. So this plant is only built for a 7.5 earthquake. Right. We just saw a 9.0 earthquake in Japan. Larry, we thank you so much. Uh, your point well taken. Even if the engineering is soundest of the sound, these plants are still run by humans, therefore can have human error. Larry Kotlikoff joining us there from Boston. He is a professor at Boston University. He is also a Bloomberg columnist.